What's going on guys, no guys here, welcome back to episode 5 of FIFA School. We're going to be talking about tactics and formations, uh, more of tactics and instruction should I say rather. Um, I'm just going to explain to you not how to use the tactics or how to set it up, but more of how you should set it up for yourself. I think because tactics are there to aid you in your gameplay. And what I mean by that is if you play a defensive a game style, you play counter attack, you should have a tactic which is suited for you so for example fast build up play and of course um, drop back and low depth so I, I would say it's kind of depending on and how you play you want your tactics to aid your performance this basically help you become more consistent tactics won't give you like 10 wins extra a week but it will help you be more consistent create more chances and if you use the same tactics week in week out what will happen is naturally you understand the players positioning and these will all help you play better in general um, I would say for this video, have everything on five and um, apart from depth, put this on three. This video, I want you to understand is I'm not going to explain to you how, what to do, but I'm going to explain to you how to make this work for you. Now, when you play the game, I want you to use five and five. Now, just play five or six games with this and see how it is. And when you play, I want you to adjust certain parameters. So, for example, I would say exclude the rest these are redundant constant pressure is no point using that anymore you might as well use team press in game but if you use that more than 20 minutes you're going to be screwed you're going to have no energy drop back and balance experiment between them two and experiment with the width now as i said you know obviously if you're if you're playing for example a 442 it's quite a wide formation you don't need a high width um, but if you're playing quite a narrow formation like a 41212 you have wing area which is very exploited so you kind of want a, a wider width on a, a narrower formation. But I would say try to do some five and six experiment. So if you if you find yourself that you like to defend the center a bit more, then obviously try to have a narrow width. I think you kind of want to change this as the game goes on. If you find someone you're going up against has is going down just the middle, then of course reduce the width. The same reason with with um, if someone's going down the wings a lot more and you're seeing you spamming that alternate crosses, then s increase the width at half time. Use your initiative in the game. The key is you want to be proactive with tactics. I mean, obviously on a stream, I'm not really that proactive because I'm also quite lazy when it comes to streaming. And obviously it's quite hard to play the game properly and obviously read the chat. So in case you're wondering, oh, no guides, you don't do that. But if I am playing serious, this is what I would do. You want to be proactive. Now, again, same with depth. If you find your opponent is sitting too deep, you might want to increase your depth, but not too much. Because if you increase your depth too much, you're always susceptible to a counterattack. I'd highly recommend just to leave this on three. As I said, three or four. I know the rest are on five, which I kind of gave you the the basis. But I would say leave the depth on three. I think this is the sweet spot. And if you find this too defensive, increase the depth or reduce it, is what I would say in the game. Now, for instance, styles, as I said, balance is probably the best to use. AI, let AI be smart for you. Um, unless you, for example, play long balls. So let's say, for example, um, when you have the ball, for example, with your with your right mid, if you do a 1-2 with your left back and you always run in behind, then play long ball. It's the same reason if you always play a quick play, quick counter attack, and you want to create a fast attack, then use fast build-up play. Same with possession. If you want to kind of, starve your opponent of the ball and you kind of want to pass around and wait for the perfect opportunity then play possession it all depends on how you play now me personally i'd recommend balanced balance is kind of the go-to um i think unless you play a specific way and as i said try these out you know you know yourself you know one person if you're watching this video you might be a person that uses long ball um who does l1 ball l1 one twos in in behind but another player might only play for example possession and might pass the ball around waiting for the perfect chance so this all depends on you the key is as i'm trying to say is you don't want to copy someone's formation in a sense you can have when i release videos like the 43 one um how i use it it's a good basis it's a good it's a good tactic but you kind of want to adjust it perfectly for yourself if i give you tactics for a 43 one it might be it might help you play seven out of ten and what you already play but to make the formation 10 out of 10, the truth is you have to adjust it for how you want to play. Um, a same width again. Um, what I would say, don't have uh, don't have that much of a difference between this width. So if you have like a, a high width and, and a low width, you don't want to be... So if you lose the ball and your team starts going a bit narrow, it goes inside, if that makes sense. You don't want to be caught in a transitional period. So you kind of don't want 
when you lose the ball for your team to go immediately go narrow, you're going to be exploited on the wings. So I would say try not to have a difference between of three. So if this is on four, try not to keep this any more than seven is what I would say. Um, but experiment with this as well. Surprisingly, you'll see there's not that much difference between one width and and ten width. There's not that much of a major difference. Um, try one game on ten and one on one, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, I would say just try to keep it in the middle. Use hug the sidelines if you can. Uh, if you want your team to go wider, I would say. Players in the box now. First thing, don't get us confused. Um, this only is for when you're in a crossing situation. So when you have the ball outside the box over here, this makes no difference how many players are in the box. It's only for when you're in a crossing situation. Of course, if you cross the ball in all the time, then have uh, a higher players in the box. Um, but I would suggest, you know, no more than seven. Any more than seven, you're going to get counted too much. And I would say now, because you have to kind of get into the box to score now in comparison to like the patch in December I wouldn't go any lower than four unless you're you know you're trying to close the game out you don't want players to commit forward um, don't go more than um, don't go less than four I would say corners and free kicks this is up to you again I wouldn't go any more than four though again because when you go to complete um, even if you go an all-out attack you're just going to get countered so even if you're like 80 minutes you're like oh my god I'm 2-1 down let me go all-out attack if you have one corner, for example, and all your players are forward, if your opponent wins that header, you're going to be screwed. You're just going to be counting. You're going to concede a goal. So I'll say that. Now, going into instructions, uh, which is going to be the main part of the video, um, understand this first and foremost. Whatever your offensive style is, instructions overwrite whatever you do. What do I mean by that is now, if you have, for example, possession play on, and you have your striker, for example, on unbalanced, okay? If he's on default, he's always going to add here to whatever your offensive style is or however you're playing, if that makes sense. That's what you need to understand. But if I change this person to get into the box or get in behind, sorry, it doesn't matter if you have offensive style on possession. It doesn't matter one bit. The player is always going to try to get in behind. So understand this instructions overwrite tactics. It's the same with cams. So what do I mean by that? So let's say, for example, if you have, for example, your cam on get into the box, right? Let's say you have your cam on get into the box and you have your players in the box on one. That cam when you're in a cross situation, it's still going to get into the box. Again, why? It's because when it comes to instructions, they always override tactics. So do bear that in mind. If you leave all your, if you leave this unbalanced, as I said again, default, which is important to understand, it will it would adhere to these players, the box. So if it's on default, then this time it won't get, it won't go in the box. If, if it's on default and you have more players in the box, then it will go into the box. So understand that instructions override tactics um, unless they're on default now it's the same thing with people always ask what should I use now I'm going to use this formation because I think you have a winger I mean a left mid right mid a CDM a cam and a left back right back so this this way I can explain to you what instructions to use and when so support runs stay central or drift wide leave this on balance unless you always want your striker on them in the middle of the pitch Leave this on balance because why? Let's say Mkhitaryan um, is playing in, let's say the board Mkhitaryan and you're in the middle of the pitch, right? If you have this on balance, Henri will naturally move out wide if this is on balance because another player is position is filling up Henri's striker position. So naturally AI will move Henri wide. Now if you want Henri to always be directly in front of Mkhitaryan in the middle, then put him and stay central. That's how you should use support runs. It's the same with attacking runs, you know. If you want Henri to always be a target man and kind of face you, that makes sense. Use a target man. If you want him to drop deep inside the box, then use him as a false nine. If you want him to get in behind all the time, then use him to get in behind. So if you want to, for example, play possession, um, but you so you want to, you want your team to pass around like that, but you want your striker, let's say your striker, to get in behind, then you can ask your striker, for example, to get in behind. Now interceptions, I would say, look. Unless you have team of the year players, do not put this on aggressive. Unless you have players with 99 stamina, do not put this. Um, it's quite the same as well if you have players like Bale or Messi. Um, if you have players like Bale, Messi, Ben Yedda, they all got really bad stamina. So you want to put them on conserved interceptions. Why? This means that they will conserve more stamina in the game. Yes, they won't be as good defensively, but they will conserve more energy. It's the same thing. Um, 
really conservative and aggression uh, I would still use some balance to be honest I wouldn't really touch these for any players unless you really know what you're doing um, I would say d defensively I would say I understand this is that if you have it on conservatives they kind of don't move out of position or out of shape too much that's what I would say um, defensive support now this kind of depends on work rates if for example Henri has high high work rates let's say Henri has high high work rates High high means that he's going to be attacking high and defending high. If you have Henri on balanced, that means he's going to be attacking and defending equally. So he's not always going to be in a striker position because he's got a high high work rate. So I understand tactics and instructions and player work rates, all they all go hand in hand, which is the big problem that people seem to misunderstand. Um, now, if you have, for example, Henri on stay forward, um, he's always going to be in a. F he's never going to come back and support the defense. No matter if he has high, high work rates, even if he has high defensive work rates, if you had him on stay forward, he's always going to stay forward. That way, for example, if you have a goal kick or you win the. Let's say you're defending and you have. And you. Let's say you win the ball back and the, the goalkeeper picks up the ball. You're always going to have a player like Henri on, on, in the middle in striker and stay forward that's why players like Ronaldo are really good to have on stay forward so when you do get a goal kick or you get a corner and you win the ball back you can just pass the ball instantly to Ronaldo so use this on how you depending on how you play now of course come back on defense now believe me even if you have for example uh, a high low work rate which is basically um so high low is basically a high attacking work rate and low defensive work rate now if you put him on balanced again he's going to be forward majority of the time he's not going to be coming back as much but if you put him on comeback on defense it doesn't matter that he has a that he's got low um, attacking work rates he's still going to come back and defend so i would say instructions is more important to be honest look the truth is you can give me any tactics i can play with anything as long as i can choose instructions it's what's important now cams is the same thing again. Um, I would say when it comes to support crosses, as I said, depending if you want players to get in the box or not, um, this is depends on you. If you want, if you want to play, for, if you like to cross a lot, then put players get into the box. If not, leave it on balance. It would add adhere to what I remember what I told you with the tactics. Um, but if, for example, um, you put him on the edge of the box, he's never going to get into the box. Is what I would say. Now. Uh, f player this is kind of it depends on how you play um i would say leave this on balance because you always want let's say you have the ball you always want make a time which is a cam in this instant as an outlet player um, he's going to be the man that's going to get the ball from your cdm and he's going to pass the ball to your striker now if you have him on free roam now this helps to be unpredictable so if you're for example in the attacking third so understand it's only in the attacking third um, so this is when you're op in your positions half. Um, so it's like um, when you're in, for example, this is the attacking. This is the attacking third. This so er everything. Um, this whole area is the attacking third. Now, when you have the ball with Mkhitaryan and you're only at in the attacking third in this instance, if you have him on free roam, he's gonna he's gonna basically drift away from his defenders and be more unpredictable. But the downside is, if you always want the guy to be in the middle. Then leave him on balance. If you leave him on free roam, I think the problem is is that they kind of roam out of position sometimes. So let's say you're on a wing, for example, and you're looking. Let's say the border bombing on a wing. You're looking for that middle player. If you have him on free roam, Mkhitaryan might be over here. Do you see the point I'm trying to say to you? So I would, unless you really know how to use this, leave this on balanced. Um, is what I would say. Now left mid and right mids. Um, I would always say left mid and right mids. As I said, come back on defence. Um, chance creation you have stay wide which um, you can have them staying wide as possible if you want your team to be spread out creating more space on the wings put it on stay wide um, free roam again as I said if you have for example your cam on free roam alongside with your with your left mid Mkhitaryan could go out wide and Lacazette could come inside so do understand that's how free roam works you're gonna have to try this out yourself um, but for example if you're happy with your left mid not being in random places then that's fine but understand if you have the ball with your with your left back and you win the ball back and you do a long ball um to your left back i mean to your left mid um if he's on free room lacazette might be on the other side of the pitch you see the point i'm trying to say so if you want consistency leave this on balance now cut inside is good um so what it is when you go down the wing naturally these players will come inside it's quite good if you want kind of um 
like not one twos, but for them to come inside. Like players like Bale are really good. If you have Bale in, for example, where Aubameyang is placed, Bale's a good example because he's left-footed, so you kind of want him to cut inside, and you kind of want him to take him, want him to take a shot with his left foot. Um, is what I'd recommend. Um, but again, if you put him on kind of side, he's always going to cut inside. So if, for example, you get the ball with Bellerin. If, for example, you try to play a through ball um, around, uh, uh, to the wing, he's gonna, he's always going to make a run inside, so do bear that in mind. It all depends on how you play. Now, CDMs, um, I would say, you know what the truth is? Put these on cut passing lanes. Unless you have very, very, very good players like Kulit Vieira, don't put these on man mark, in my opinion. Um, I would probably I would probably say leaders are unbalanced. I think that's where the best sorry, should I say rather rather than cut passing lanes. I use cut passing lanes. Um but you can try this out for yourself. Maybe try put one on one man mark, one on come uh, cut passing lane to see how they are and how they're positioned. But I'd honestly leaders are unbalanced to be honest. Um I use cut passing lanes because I play a specific way, but our leaders are unbalanced now. Attacking support, I understand this. If you have this on stay back, he's always going to stay back. As I said, stay forward. You know this already. I don't have to explain that. Now, um, for cover center. Now, this is kind of important because you always want your players to, to cover the center. So if you have, for example, um, let's say you have, um, let's say, you, for example, you have your left mid on free roam. You kind of want one of your CDMs to cover the wing. What I mean by that is because if, for example, his chance creation is on free roam, let's say you're attacking and Lacazette's on free roam and he ends up being, ends up coming over here. Let's say he plays in, in a, let's say Lacazette ends up playing in this position, right? You're going to have no winger left mid. So when you lose the ball, you kind of want Dennis Suarez in this instance, who's on cover the wing, to help defend the wing area. Of course, that means that you're going to be out, you're going to be not outnumbered in the middle, you're going to have him draw away from the middle, but this guy is kind of going to help support and defend on the wing. So I understand it's important to have cover wing if you have a player like your left mid or right mid on free roam. It's the same when you're playing a 4 one 2 one 2 um, With a 4 one 2 one 2 you need to understand that a 4 one 2 one 2 is a formation where there is, or the second variation, there's actually no actual left mids. I mean, left mid and right mids, all central. So you can have your CDM, on stay center, but you need to have these players on cover the wing. I've seen players, people put this on cover, so this is just absurd because when you're defending, you can, if the player is going down the wing, because this formation naturally has no wingers, right? You want your right center mid and your left center mid to cover the wings. You see why it's important? So again, this depends on what formation you're playing, depending on the formation you're playing. So I understand that. That's another thing I would like to explain is that it just depends on what formation you're playing. Um, if you have, for example, wide players here and they're on comeback on defense, you can leave these guys on cover center because you know you have the stability on the wings. Now, center backs, leave these. Don't t don't even touch this. Don't even leave this on. There's no point on honestly having this on unless you can all out attack in like the last second in the game. Um, same interceptions, I would leave them to be honest. What I would say is um, for your left back and right backs, put these on stay back. Um, I wouldn't recommend them going forward. Um, one thing I would say is if you do a run type, understand this. If if the run type is overlapping runs, he's not going to make an overlapping run if he's on stay back while attacking. Understand that. that these are not, well, you, you could basically say they're not mutually exclusive to some extent, if that makes sense. They kind of adhere to each other. If you have if you have this on stay back while attacking, he's, then they're not going to overlap. This is the big confusion that I see is I have my left back and right back on overlap or inverted. Why they're not making runs in behind? Well, the truth is you need to have the attacking runs enabled. Now, to be completely honest, uh, balanced is good. I mean, but if you, I would say to have one on balance, maybe the one that's more attacking. Again, if you have if you have a high high work rate, so like. Um, a left back which is high high work rates like um Kyle Walker I think has got higher work rates he's going to equally attack and defend but if you have someone like Marcelo who's a left back he's got high low work rates if you leave him on balanced he's always going to be attacking because he has high low work rates so he's going to be attacking more than he's defending so you're going to find he's going to be attacking more and maybe he's not going to be defending as much so do keep that in mind it depends on what players you have as your left back and right backs but let's say you leave him on balanced let's just say for example and you have um and you have it, it kind of depends but let's say for example you have running running type and overlap 
these players are going to overlap your left mid or your right center mid or your or your cams whatever player is on the wing your left back will always overlap that player so that will that will mean that your kind of your cam or your left mid will be more centralized if you have it in, in on inverted what this means is that your players will be pushing in between in between your left mid so what happens is is that it will make an underlapping run and what that means is your wide player, your cam or your left mid will go to a wider position. So understand that. So depending on how you want to play, if you want Lacazette on the wing, for example, because you want to cross with him, then fair play. But if you have to understand that Kolasnak is now going to be playing where Lacazette is essentially playing when you're attacking. So do understand that. And also when you're defending, understand if you're on if they're on inverted run types, they're gonna have to run back like this. So they're gonna so your wing area is gonna be exploited. So do bear that in mind is what I would say. Um what I would say is with interceptions, leave this on conservative. I do find that sometimes the game pushes um I would I I'll just recommend for example I would recommend stay back and overlap for both of these and conservative interceptions. Now I don't use conservative because I'm quite good at controlling my defense, but I do see that sometimes that my left back and right back stay if for example someone does a one two ball um in behind if, if class nets on on aggressive i do find that sometimes that he kind of commits so let's say for example uh, your opponent does a through ball in behind um if for example he's on an aggressive interceptions class like this is my instance might push forward too much it might leave space in behind that's how i'd recommend conservative anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this video um this was mainly about instructions and rather than the formations, but I had to, I mean, tactics, I had to kind of had to delve into tactics a little bit because, as I said, they kind of work hand in hand. Um, but I've already made, you've probably seen many of my videos on my formation guides on how the tactics already work, so I don't have to explain that at all. Um, but I had to explain um, instructions because no one really talks about instructions too much. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. It is a bit of a long video. Um, and the next episode will be in regards to how to set up your team, what formations to use in episode think in episode six. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Take it easy, boys, and I'll catch you in the next one.